All right, welcome back. Last week, we started to explore the burning question. Should we be funding XCOM? We used the Drake equation to take a probabilistic look, er, well, a rough guesstimate, of how many intelligent civilizations there were in our galaxy. This led to the conclusion that the nearest civilization is, on average, probably about 18,000 light years away. So even ignoring the fact that anyone who can cross the vast gulfs of space is probably so technologically superior to us that putting together a modern military defense force to fight them is probably ridiculous, this seems to indicate that the nearest possible threat is too far away to worry about. But, the great caveat of the Drake Equation is that it only accounts for civilizations occupying a single solar system. So, you're probably thinking, why don't we just put another variable in the Drake Equation to estimate how far a civilization expands? But, in doing so, we run headlong into the Fermi Paradox. I will explain. Enrico Fermi, one of the great physicists of the 20th century, was having lunch with some of his friends while working in the Los Alamos National Lab and their conversation had just gotten to space aliens. You see, it was 1950, and since Roswell, alien sightings and reports were sort of the rage. So at lunch, one of them pulled out the paper and there was a comic about aliens, stealing trash cans in New York. And they were all laughing and joking about aliens when Fermi went silent for a moment, and then exclaimed, where are they? Fermi was famous for making quick, high-level logical calculations in his head, and here's what he just realized. Given that the sun's a relatively young star when compared to the galaxy as a whole, the sun's about 4.6 billion years old, but the galaxy's been around for something like 13.7 billion years, there were probably civilizations that came before ours. If those civilizations colonized their home system and then sent out colony ships at even remarkably slow speeds, and each of those colonies sent out ships even every thousand years, they'd colonize the entire universe in less than a billion years. Here's how the math works out. Let's say that typical colonies are 10 light years apart. Now, let's take the very worst case scenario and say that colony ships move at two hundredths of a percent of the speed of light, which is the fastest speed we humans have managed to accelerate our craft to. Now, let's say that it takes a colony a thousand years to send out another radial wave of colony ships. This means that the colonization front is moving out at about 0 0.00019 light years per year. As the galaxy is roughly a hundred thousand light years across, this means that the entire galaxy should be colonized within 525 million years. And this is the most pessimistic estimate I've ever seen. If you bump up our ship speed to something highly plausible with near-future technology, say, a tenth of the speed of light, you get the entire galaxy colonized in a mere 11 million years. And while this may seem like a long time to us, this is a blink of an eye in the galactic lifespan. The galaxy should have been colonized many, many times over by now. For me, realize that even our planet, which has been able to support at least some forms of life for 3.4 billion years, should have been visited over and over. And yet, so far as we can tell, that's not the case. He realized that even if through some statistical anomaly we hadn't been visited yet, the galaxy should certainly be a far noisier place than it seems to be. So it left him with a great mystery. Where was everyone? As we saw with our Drake equation, it's not unreasonable to estimate that roughly seven civilizations with the capacity for interstellar communication, by which I mean producing electromagnetic radiation such as radio waves, exist in the galaxy at any given time. That's far more civilizations than we need to have the Fermi paradox take effect, so how do we reconcile these two? Well, really nobody knows, but here are some theories. Number one, the Earth is unique in all the galaxy. In my opinion, there's simply too much evidence that this is improbable to seriously consider it, but it comes up all the time, so we'll include it. Number two, civilizations don't get out of their home system. I have a hard time accepting that it's never, ever happened, but one of the key elements of our Drake Equation guess was lifetime of a civilization. And if that number is far enough below what it would take to muster the resources to start colonizing other stars, then it makes sense that our galaxy is so quiet. Of course, any species that achieved interstellar colonization would be so much less likely to simply go extinct that if it occurred even once, we'd probably run straight back into the Fermi Paradox. Number three, civilizations choose to stay in their home system. Either the economic cost or just the lack of interest prevents civilizations from interstellar colonization. It's possible that there are unforeseen difficulties that make interstellar colonization so exorbitantly expensive that it simply isn't feasible with a solar system's worth of resources. But given humanity's penchant for insane feats of colonization, I have a hard time buying into that one too. But it is possible. Number four, we are being protected. Often called the Prime Directive Hypothesis, it states that other civilizations exist and are all around us, but are shielding us from the knowledge of their existence. Given how we've tried to do this with a small number of tribes in the Amazon, and periodically fail spectacularly due to the whims of a few people or even a simple accident, I'm skeptical, but who knows. Number five, they're already among us, and the government's keeping a tight lid on it. Personally, I seriously doubt that there's some great government cover-up of the existence of sentient alien life. Maybe it's different where you live, I'm just not sure my government could effectively keep a secret that monumental. Number six, we're just looking at it wrong. This is probably the argument that I find most compelling. The majority of our searching for traces of alien life has been for radio waves. If a much more advanced civilization has some other form of communication we don't yet understand, we may not be able to detect it, even if it's flooding around us all the time. There are easily a half dozen more hypotheses we could rattle off, but I'll leave it at that. If you're interested, look at the Drake Equation and think about where it could break down, where our assumptions could be wrong in such a way as to leave us in a quiet universe.
So where does that ultimately leave us? Should we fund XCOM? Well, it all depends on how you think we should resolve the Fermi Paradox. Maybe those other civilizations never leave their system and we got nothing to worry about. Maybe there aren't any others out there to begin with. Or perhaps everything is so quiet because they're keeping us in the dark while they prepare their attack. See you next week.